Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday, January 6th. Before we start, please join us at the Money Show in Orlando, Florida, February 8th through the 11th. I will present a session on February 10th about trend trading. For more information, go to worldmoneyshow.com. And now on to the market. U.S. stocks are kind of moving sideways today after data from the U.S. Labor Department showed employment in December rose less than expected, but a rebound in wages suggested sustained growth in the labor market. The public and private sectors together added 156,000 jobs last month, compared with 204,000 jobs added in November. The unemployment rate ticked up to 4.7%. The minutes of the Federal Reserve's December meeting released on this past Wednesday showed that the central bank currently expects to raise rates about three times this year. And now let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we usually do, we're going to look at our daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 index. As I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $226.47. That's about $22.64 on the S&P 500 itself. Now we know it made a new all-time closing high back on December 13th at $228.34. Now it's sitting atop its red line, the 20-day moving average. We always consider that to be a short-term, kind of a short-term trend line. Of course, it's also trading at a premium to its 50-day moving average and its 200-day moving average, the black line on this chart. It's still in an uptrend, as you can see, although it's been moving pretty much down to sideways from, from the, from the uh, high it made in December again on the 13th to the present day. Uh, if we look at the RSI here, we see that the 14-day RSI actually pretty much followed down the price of the SPY toward the last part of December after one heck of a rally from the from the 1st of November. And um, so the RSI here, we're going to call it neutral. It's moved back up with the last little move up. The MACD, just about the same thing, although the MACD line is trading beneath the signal line. Still above zero, zero so no problem. So what we can deduce from all this is that the S&P 500 is positive. We can tell again that it's standing on the corner looking both ways, deciding if it wants to rest into, uh, into this, the, the remainder of January or if indeed it wants to move up, uh, go past this 228 closing high and move toward 230. And it's anyone's guess which way it's going to move next. Please know that no one on earth knows where the market is going to move in the next few days, weeks, months, or years. All right, now on to the iShares Russell 2000, the IWM. As you all probably know if you've seen this space before, I watched the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM, as many times this small cap index that is pretty much U.S.-centric will act as a leading indicator as to where the broader market goes. And we can kind of think of it this way. If the S&P 500, which of course has the top 500 or largest 500 uh, equities by market cap in the U.S. has it in it, and many of these stocks in the S&P are international stocks, we can say that if it moves higher, that's like the generals marching into war. But if the iShares Russell 2000, we can call them the soldiers. Again, these are U.S.-centric stocks that kind of reflect the, the economy of the U.S. stock market, or at least, uh, uh, well, we'll call, it, we'll call it that. It's not exact, but the feeling the, <clears throat> in the U.S. stock market. 
if 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 the if the soldiers don't follow the general, we'll call the SPY or the S and P five hundred into war. If instead they turn around and start to move in the other direction or head down, then that's a signal that could pressure the broad market lower. So I watch the iShares Russell two thousand ETF a lot. Uh, especially in times like these when the S&P 500 is hesitating to see if the IWM will act again as a leading indicator for the broader market. Small caps have been known to lead us out of bear markets into bull markets and they've been known to lead us out of bull markets into bear markets. So I keep an eye on it. It doesn't mean that I sell everything I own if the IWM starts moving down. It's just uh, one more thing I look at to get a feel for where the market might go next. Now as I captured this chart this morning, the IWM was trading at $136.08. It too made an all-time high of $138.82 on December 9th. Since then, the IWM too has been standing on the corner looking both ways, deciding where it wants to go. It's been consolidating basically uh, in a tight range here between 134.50 to 138, kind of, uh, again, um, moving back and forth in a small tight range here just below its highs. So I'll be interested to see. At this moment, it's fallen slightly below its 20-day moving average. Nothing to worry about there. Again, has support at 135. Then we've got the 50-day down here just above 130, and of course the 200-day much lower. Uh, the RSI here is definitely moving in its own downtrend, and that is uh, a nudge to say, hey, pay attention. The IWM may not feel as good as it looks. As well, the MACD is below its, its signal line, the black line below the red line, and it too is showing us a bearish divergence. So again, while I'm not making any big decisions here, I am keeping an eye on the IWM to see if it can maintain its uh, status up here above 134.50 to 135, or if it too will succumb to profit taking as we move further into January. And if so, I'll watch the S&P 500 uh, along with that. Now let's look at our third chart today. We're going to look at a chart that's kind of gotten beaten up, a sector that's gotten beaten up, and it makes sense because when uh, we talk about raising interest rates, if, when the Fed talks about raising interest rates, that usually main, means that bond-like stocks take a hit, and bond-like stocks are, are usually in the utility sector, certainly in the uh, real estate group, uh, and, of course, other areas that pay nice dividends, such as Staples and Telecom. Uh, the iShares U.S. Real Estate ETF, symbol IYR, this is an ETF filled up with REITs, and it's a very diverse ETF. Uh, they have many different types of REITs, from specialized REITs to healthcare REITs to office REITs to residential REITs. So I, I like the IYR as a good all-around diversified um, asset. And I've been watching it here. It's certainly moved in a downtrend, again, as interest rates were talked about um, and, and certainly raised. Um, and, and it's been moving down pretty dramatically. Moved down uh, early this year, actually, the um, iShares was trading at about 86 in August. Now, please know that, um, and I should have told you this just a minute ago, the top holdings are SPG, that's Prime and Simon Property Group, that's the big mall holder, uh, American Tower, Public Storage, Crown Castle International. Again, in August it was trading at 86. It reached, recently in November reached down to 72. Uh, but I've been keeping an eye on it here and, and I don't know if you all can see this. It made a small inverse head and shoulders in October, November, and stretching into December. And when it fulfilled that pattern and then moved above the neckline, uh, 
it, 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 it moved up pretty dramatically as stocks are, or ETFs, whatever asset you're trading, usually does in an inverse head and shoulder. It moved up pretty dramatically, then came back down. It's been a little volatile ever since. Now it's starting up again. It's above its 50-day moving average. And trading up today, when I captured this chart, at $78.46. So what I'm looking at here is resistance in the form of the 200-day moving average and in price at a little over $78. Now the IYR, by the way, pays a dividend. Let me check it for you here. I believe it's 3.36% annually, which is still going to be better than any 10-year bond. Um, Yes, I'm correct on that. Uh, but that said, um, if it can move higher here, if it can move over 79, move over the 200-day moving average, and break to the upside, I'll be keeping an eye on it to um, see if potentially it can move up toward 80. Now, with that said, because it's moved up here for pretty much six days in a row, and it's meeting up with resistance. If the market sells off next week at all or pulls back, I would expect the IYR to move back down toward the 50-day moving average. And, and you know what? I hope it does. That will give us a better buying opportunity. Then if it moves down, stays above the 50-day moving average, and then starts higher back up to 78.46 or so, it will be something I will potentially look at for the long side. Again, I'll like it better when it's over 79, and I may add to the position then. Please know that if it moves below the 50-day moving average and closes below it, I am no longer interested in this asset. Okay, so now we will go on to next week's economic reports. But first, Please know that the ability to evaluate price charts is the most important tool you can own. And that goes for traders and investors. It's really simple. The better you know how to read charts, the more money you're going to make. So check out our New Year's sale going on right now. We're offering 20% off our already low-priced online trader training, How to Read Charts. Use my simple five-step process to read charts the right way and then bring home bigger profits. You can go to the link on this screen or simply go to TonyTurner.com and click on the pop-up banner on our home page and you will see it there, How to Read Charts. Start out 2017 right and make this your most successful trading year ever. And now for the coming week's economic reports, we have a blessedly short week of economic reports this week, or limited reports I should say. Monday we don't have much going on in that arena, nor do we on Tuesday. Wednesday we have our usual crude inventories. Thursday we have our usual jobless claims, our usual nat gas inventories. And on Friday, we will have the PPI, or Producer Price Index, Retail Sales, and Michigan Sentiment Report. Again, don't miss out on our first of the year offer, a 20% discount count on our online trader training, How to Read Charts. You'll learn how to evaluate charts right so you make more profits now and always. And this sale ends in two days, so don't miss this opportunity to invest in yourself and your future. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.